In this quick and to the point video, I'll show 10 things to attempt that may resolve drift related issues on your Switch Pro controller, starting with the easy methods and working on up to complex ones. Some methods build on previous ones, so I suggest you start at the beginning. I also suggest you do recalibration after each method. Speaking of calibration, this is the first thing you should attempt if you have drift. On your Switch, follow the menu path I show right here to get to the right screen, and then do what it tells you to do. This one has two steps. First, make sure you have the latest system update installed. Then follow the menu path shown here to run any controller updates that are available. Resyncing the controller may help. Put the switch in sleep mode, then wake it up using the power button. Then using the Joy-Con, hit A three times to go to the home screen. Then press that little sync button that's on top of the Pro Controller, and then press any other button on it. Dirt can get under your analog sticks and cause drift. Turn the controller upside down and tap on the other side of where the problematic stick is. This can dislodge some of the dirt. Another way to dislodge dirt is to blow around the edges of the stick. You can use a straw or compressed air. Make sure you're moving the stick toward the opposite side in which you're blowing. Some people put their mouth directly on it and blow. If you do, don't inhale, and also make sure nobody walks in on you. If blowing doesn't work, try sucking with a vacuum. Once again, make sure you're moving the stick around. This one involves going inside the controller, which isn't as hard as you might think. You'll need a small full-up screwdriver. Two of the screws are recessed, so it'll need to have a long, skinny neck. First, you need to remove the two screws that hold the handles. Before you do that, though, loosen them up with a few drops of water for a few minutes, and then tap on them, and then dry them off. There are different kinds of screws during this process. Make sure you don't mix them up in a single pile. Next up are four screws that hold the back plate. Remove the battery by sticking your finger into the gap. Leave a like if you think I'm doing a good job in describing this process. Remove the remaining five screws. Two of them are very recessed, so you'll need a screwdriver with a long neck. That makes it hard to tell if you're actually turning it, and therefore makes it easy to strip. If one does strip, use a drill with a small drill bit to dig around it. The controller will now be able to come apart. Apply force to all sides. It is pointless to resist, my son. Inside is a ribbon cable. There is a little gate that holds it in. Raise the gate and pull it out. He took it out. The tops of the sticks will come off. Take them to the sink and wash them. You now have access to do a lot of cleaning within the mechanisms that are underneath. Dirt gets into the parts, and it also gets into the doors that are on the side. Even if you only have problems with one of the two sticks, I advise you clean them both. Turn the controller upside down and tap, then blow on the mechanisms, preferably while they're still upside down. You probably don't want to use the vacuum method here because it's too close to the components. You might suck out more than just dirt. Next, get some alcohol. It doesn't matter if it's labeled as isopropyl or rubbing. Get a q-tip drenched in it and use it to get the mechanisms wet. Get around the doors as well. Move the stick around as you do this. You can also use contact cleaner if you have it. If you have no alcohol or contact cleaner, water is okay, but it'll need more time to dry, and you should help it dry by blowing on it. Once everything is dry, put the controller back together and test. Don't forget to recalibrate. This time you'll be going inside the doors on the problematic stick to clean them from within. This method is known to be one of the most dependable ways to resolve drift, but it also carries some risk, because by opening the doors you can permanently damage them, I'm going to give detailed guidance on how to avoid the damage, but please proceed at your own risk. Before opening the doors, you'll want to acquaint yourself with how they stay closed. There are three knobs and two latches that are all pressed into the metal. The first step is to take a tiny tool and loosen those latches by pressing them inward. Magnify. Full scan. 
Next, take a small flathead screwdriver and pry the top gently. Work the sides a little bit too. Eventually you'll be able to bend the door down with your fingers. I declare bankruptcy! It's possible that one of the three knobs gets bent during all this. If so, attempt to unbend it, because the door won't shut if it's bent. If the knob is too damaged to unbend, use nail clippers to clip it off. Remove the disc inside the door. It's actually called a wiper, and has a couple of small nubs on it. Gently clean those. Try not to bend them downward as that'll make them less effective. Also clean out the sensor area inside the door. Reinsert the disc into the chamber. Make sure you don't have it upside down. Close the door making sure it snaps shut. Then put everything back together and see if it worked. If the previous method didn't work, get the disc back out and bend the wiper nubs upward. You can also swap the disc with another one if you have one. If nothing else has worked, it's possible that the plastic knob that holds the disc on has some wear to it. So it's a little loose in the hole it goes in. Reducing the size of the hole may help. Take a little sliver of tape and put it through the hole. Stay on target. We're too close. Stay on target. And then press it into one side. Then take another sliver and do the other side. Cut the extra off with a nail clipper. Then put the disc back in and see if it improved. There's another way to test if you still have drift using a free online website. Click the link on the screen to see my video on how to use it. If any of the methods in this current video helped, let me know which ones as I come back and track it from time to time. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.